Hi, thanks for watching BibleMountain.com. In this video, we're going to read from Exodus 10 and 11 and talk about wishful thinking and our concept of God. We humans want life to be fair, and we want God to be fair. But the truth is, God is not fair. And Exodus 10 and 11 illustrate the fact that God is not fair. Now, there are some people who would say that they refuse to believe in a God who is not fair. In other words, they have this concept that God should be fair, and if you tell them that God is not fair, then they refuse to believe in God. But the reality is our wishful thinking does not change the truth about God. God is who He is, and if the facts tell us that God is not fair, then God is not fair, and we simply need to accept that reality. Now, before we get into Exodus 10 and 11, let's review the first uh, 10 chapters of Exodus just for some context. At the beginning of Exodus, we're told the Israelites moved from Canaan down to the land of Egypt because of a famine. The Israelites were in Egypt for several centuries. Eventually, the Egyptians turned the Israelites into slaves. Then we're told about a man named Moses. Moses is an Israelite. He grew up in Egypt. When he was an adult, he killed an Egyptian, so he had to flee to Midian. He was there for a couple decades. Then God told Moses to leave Midian, go back to Egypt, talk to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh to release the Israelites so that Moses could lead the Israelites from Egypt back to the land of Canaan. Moses went and talked to Pharaoh. Pharaoh refused to release the Israelites. In fact, Pharaoh made life worse for the Israelites. So God gave Moses the ability to bring some plagues upon the Egyptians as signs and miracles to prove to Pharaoh that God was speaking through Moses. So Moses brought frogs and gnats and flies and a pestilence on the livestock, and he brought boils and hail and locusts. And these plagues brought a lot of destruction upon Egypt. And Moses was able to tell Pharaoh when the plague would stop and when the plague would end. And the fact that Moses was able to um, tell specifically when these plagues would start and end was evidence, was proof to Pharaoh that God was actually speaking through Moses. But through all these plagues, Pharaoh refused to uh, give in. Pharaoh refused to release the Israelites. And part of the reason for that was that God was hardening Pharaoh's heart. And we see that throughout these plagues. And the reason was that God wanted to perform all these uh, signs and miracles because he wanted to prove his power not just to the Egyptians but also to the Israelites. So that's the context that we start reading in Exodus 10 verse 21. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even a darkness which may be felt. And notice the word felt. This was going to be a darkness where you could not even see your hand in front of your face. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. The Egyptians did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. So notice this darkness went on for three days. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go, serve Yahweh, only let your flocks and your herds be detained. Even your little ones may go with you. So again, we see Pharaoh said, on the one hand, Pharaoh said, go. But Pharaoh wanted to, the Israelites to leave their flocks and their herds behind. That was Pharaoh's way of trying to keep some control so that he could force the Israelites to come back. But Moses said, you must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice them to Yahweh our God. Therefore, our livestock too shall, too shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we shall take some of them to serve Yahweh our God. And until we arrive there, we ourselves do not know with what we shall serve Yahweh. But Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and Pharaoh was not willing to let Israel go. So again, we see that Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart. Then Pharaoh said to Moses, Get away from me. Beware. Do not see my face again. For in the day you see my face, you shall die. Moses said, You are right. I shall never see your face again. Now Yahweh said to Moses, One more plague I will bring on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, Pharaoh will let you Israelites go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out from here completely. So notice the contrast. Up to this point, Pharaoh has refused to let Israel go. 
But God's going to bring one more plague, and at that point, Pharaoh's going to drive the Israelites out. He's going to force them out. Speak now in the hearing of the Israelites, that each man ask from his neighbor and each woman from her neighbor for articles of silver and articles of gold. Yahweh gave the Israelites favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Furthermore, the man Moses himself was greatly esteemed in the land of Egypt, both in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Moses said, Thus says Yahweh, About midnight I am going out into the midst of Egypt. Now notice, this is God's message to Pharaoh that's being delivered by uh, Moses. About midnight, I'm going out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of the Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the millstones, and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. Moreover, there shall be a great cry in all the land of Egypt, such as there has not been before, and such as shall never be again. But against any of the sons of Israel a dog will not even bark, whether against man or beast, so that you Egyptians may understand how Yahweh makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. So notice the word distinction. God's going to do this and make a distinction between the Israelites and Egypt. And then notice the end quote. That's the end of God's message to Pharaoh. But then Moses continues speaking, and this is Moses speaking to Pharaoh. All these your servants will come down to me and bow themselves before me, saying, Go out, you and all the Israelites who follow you. And then Moses said to Pharaoh, After that I will go out. Moses went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. So notice the words hot anger. Moses was very upset at this point. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, so that my wonders will be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So again, Yahweh had been hardening Pharaoh's heart uh, and made it that Pharaoh would not listen. And God did that so that God could multiply his signs, his wonders in the land of Egypt and demonstrate his power. Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh, yet Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart and Pharaoh did not let the sons of Israel go out of his land. So again, we see the word hardened again. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Part of the reason the Pharaoh did not let the Israelites go was because God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now that's the end of, that's as far as we're going to read today. So this is an example of the fact that God is not fair. You know, it wasn't fair that God hardened Pharaoh's heart and really did not uh, almost prevented Pharaoh from obeying God and releasing the Israelites. Now Romans uh, makes reference to this. Romans 9, 17, For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up, to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then, God has mercy on whom he desires, and God hardens whom he desires. So again, this is a statement of the example that we just saw, that God told Pharaoh very clearly that the reason God made Pharaoh the Pharaoh and the reason that God hardened Pharaoh's heart was so that God could demonstrate his power. And Paul, who wrote Romans, you know, makes a statement, God has mercy on whom he desires. Now, a lot of us re would respond this way, and Paul wrote this, You will say to me then, why does God still find fault for who resists his will? So in other words, if God hardened Pharaoh's heart, then why did God find fault with Pharaoh? And we could say the same thing uh, in our lives. If God is not treating us fairly and if God is sometimes hardening us or not hardening us, why would he ever find fault with us? Well, here's Paul's answer to that, or God's answer to that. On the contrary, who are you, O oh man, who answers back to God? The thing molded will not say to the molder, why did you make me like this? Will it? Does not the potter have a right over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for common use? So we see here that we are likened to clay. In other words, um, the different status between clay and a potter is the same as a difference in status between us and God. You know, a human who has a lump of clay, that clay is nothing. 
that clay is just an object. And the potter has the right to take that lump of clay and use some of it for uh, sacred use and, and honorable use and other just for common use. And likewise, God is the creator and we are nothing compared to God. And um, God has the right to do with us whatever he desires. And so when God uh, hardens our heart, the answer is, well, who are we to answer back to God? Because God created us, and he can do with us whatever he wants. So just to review, we humans want life to be fair. and We want God to be fair. But we saw in Exodus that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, and that teaches us that God is not fair. And then we see in Romans that our status is so far beneath God's status that we don't have any right to complain about the fact that God is not fair. We must simply accept this truth about God. And again, there are some people that use this as a reason to deny the existence of God. But the fact of the matter is our wishful thinking does not change the truth about God. God is who he is. And if God is not fair, then that's who God is, and we must simply accept the truth and the reality about God. Thanks for watching BibleMountain.com. Bible Mountain exists to develop biblically literate Christians because the Bible is from God, and each one of us is accountable to God for knowing and following the Bible. It is in our best interest to learn as much about the Bible as we possibly can. If you'd like to increase your biblical literacy, please join my email list so you can receive future videos via email for free. There are links on this video screen to take you to a sign-up page, or you can go to BibleMountain.com and click on Follow. This is a free subscription, and your email address will not be sold nor given away. Also, please use the share buttons on your webpage to like this video and share it with your friends. And once again, thank you for watching BibleMountain.com.